What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys an updated Yosenju Kaiju profile. Now this update is long overdue. I'm not gonna lie to you, I should have probably done it a while ago. But I think it's actually low-key, a really good format for Yosenju to be played right now, especially the Kaiju builds, because going second right now is very relevant and the Kaijus are really, really good in today's format. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. One more thing I wanna say is, we are really, really close to 5,000 subscribers, and the goal originally was to get to 5,000 by the end of 2021. We got a few more days left. Is it possible? I don't know. I believe in every single one of you guys. Thank you all for watching, and with that, I guess, on to the video. Okay, so to get started, we are, of course, playing, and again, if you guys have seen any of my past Yosenjo videos, I will never change this ratio unless something new comes out that completely breaks the deck. I am not changing this ratio and that is triple comma one, triple comma two, triple comma three and double Yosenju Sujik. No Izna. Izna is the other one that people like to play. I do not like to play. It doesn't synergize with what the deck does best and that's really what you want to make this deck do is you want to make it as optimal as possible. So you don't want to play any of these random Yosenju names that doesn't help the deck do what it wants to do, all right? These are the best ones. They get themselves on the field. They all have relevant effects. You need to be playing these ones. So like I said, these are the ones you always want to play. Even when I try the other ones, I, I keep wanting them to work, but they just don't. Like this is just the most optimal. So yes, definitely these are the best ratios as you guys can see here. Then I'm playing five Kaijus. I'm playing three Gamma Seals as well as double Humongous. I really like this ratio. I think five Kaijus is all you really need. To be honest, you could play two, two, and one. And by that, I mean like two Gamma Seal, two Humongous, and one miscellaneous name. But as you guys can see, we're actually not playing Slumber. So for that reason, it's just better to play with the smallest beater which is gamma seal and the second smallest which is kumongus because then it's just a lot easier to deal with and helps you otk more because there's less damage that you have to do so you can end up otking through a gamma seal a lot easier than you can end up otking through something like a uh, godarla for example now i will say though that i know tri bird is a thing and i know people like to play the barrier statue so you could argue because i just mentioned the godarla you could argue that you can change out the kumongus for the godarla that's not a bad option as well but again Unlike other decks, this deck doesn't really special summon too much because you are playing Yosenjus, which are all normal summons. So you're not really worried about the barrier statue too much to begin with. But yeah, if you wanted to play the Godarla, you guys can play that as well. But these are the five that I'm going with and they're working really well for me. Then this is the little Spangle Spice over here. And that is Triple Dimension Shifter. Now, I was playing, as you guys can see here in the side deck, Nibiru in the main deck. Now, Nibiru works super, super well in Yosenju because if you guys don't know, Yosenju all have the same effect where at the end of the turn, they're going to come back to your hand. So they're kind of like spirit monsters, right? Which means that no matter what turn it is, turn one, turn two, turn five, turn seven, Nibiru is always going to be live because you're never going to have monsters on the board. There's only really two situations, maybe three, where you're going to have monsters on the board. One is when you use your Yosenjus to overlay into something like uh, a cowboy or something like a Utopia double. But if you're going into these, you're going into it for game anyways. So the odds of that happening are very low. The second situation where you're going to have a monster on the field is if you Kaiju your opponent and then summon a Kaiju onto your side of the field. That's the only other situation really. And the third situation, which never really comes up, but I should mention it anyways, is if you end up using Gamma and then with the Gamma, you make something like a Berserker or an Omega. Then in that case, you could argue that, you know, you can debut your own monster. But again, that barely comes up ever. And, and so, yeah, the real, the only, the only one that actually ever comes up is you having a Kaiju. Because again, if you're going into any of the rank four plays with the Yosenjus, like into the Utopia, Utopia double, you're going for game anyways, right? So yeah, Nibiru synergizes super, super well. But back to the deck profile, which is Dimension Shifter. Dimension Shifter is insane, okay? So the reason I love this card is one, it's just insane in the format right now, just in general, like this card breaks the format. What this deck does really well is that if your opponent sets up a board somehow, some way, okay? Or if you have your Dimension Shifter, honestly, the chances of your opponent even setting up a board are very low. But let's say your opponent sets up some kind of board through a Dimension Shifter, all right? Like you, you go, you're going second, by the way, if I didn't mention, you always want to go second with this deck, of course. Let's say your opponent, you know, they start their turn, you go Dimension Shifter, and they make like a really suboptimal play, but they make a play, right? Okay, then you Kaiju them. That monster that you Kaijued gets banished. Like you're breaking boards and you're not letting your opponent make boards. Which is why I think Dimension Shifter in this deck is insane. And again, all your Yosenjus are not going to the graveyard because they're all coming back to your hand at the end phase. The only time they're ever going to the graveyard is when you're going into the, the Utopia package. And again, when you're doing that, 
you're going for game. So right now I'm really, really liking Dimension Shifter. It is the spice, but again, I'm telling you, if you wanted to, you could play Trip on the Biru in the main deck. This is what I just swapped it out for. Dimension Shifter is just really, really good this format. I think a little bit better than Nibiru is this format, but you could also argue Nibiru is really, really good as well in other formats. So you could just swap these out. If you guys are seeing this deck profile in the future, you guys can swap out the Dimension Shifters for Nibiru. But yeah, Dimension Shifter works super, super well in this deck. Then you're playing stuff like Triple Ash, Triple Gamma, as well as the Driver. And Gamma is really, really good because like I said earlier, all the Yosendus are gonna be coming back to your hand at the end phase. So Gamma is pretty much always gonna be live. So that's why you wanna play the Triple Gamma as as well as the one driver then to round off the hand traps we're playing two veiler and three infinite impermanence veiler is really really good this format that's why i like to play it i think this format especially with sword soul being a thing uh try the Orlusk being a thing and all those like combo decks being a thing really i think that effect veiler just stopping a normal summon is very very important and sometimes they just can't play through it so that's why i do like veiler as well of course as the imperm next up for the spells we're just playing one tanky of course tanky is at one so we're playing one searches so any of your send your names triple extravagance again you don't need your extra deck at all really outside of the utopia package to otk and then i'm gonna be honest there's very real situations where you cowboy for game which is why we're playing two cowboy here so that's really the only time you're ever gonna go into extra deck so extrav at three is perfectly fine you want more cards in your hand it's just better triple lightning storm as well as one harpy's feather duster lightning storm is really good because it deals with front row and back row um and it's really your only back row removal in this in this deck outside of the harpy's feather duster because all the kaijus are monster removal even you can argue gamma is like monster removal dimension shifter is just everything removal right and so yeah you guys can see there's a lot of removal in this deck you're just trying to break boards or let your opponent not make boards and then try to otk from there right uh so yeah triple lightning storm one harpies and then one double or nothing the only real brick in this deck because it helps you otk and it's one of your other options that you can just go for game but again so the thing is with this deck is it's very linear in how it wants to play it's basically like you have a hand of like, let's say a hand trap, a kaiju and some Yosenjus, right? Then your opponent is going to make a board. You're going to kaiju the monster that you have a problem with. You're going to hand trap something during their turn to stop them from making a board. And then you're going to try to just spam Yosenju monsters and go for game that way, right? The Yosenju monsters are pretty big on their own, like 16, 18 and 15, especially with a tanky, like them boosting by 100. You're doing a lot of chip damage at a time with the Yosenjus. So this is why I like to play something like Cowboy. But speaking of Cowboy, let's get into the extra deck now. So we are playing Triple Utopia as well as Triple Utopia Double. Of course, you're playing Extravagance and you want your double or nothing to resolve. So to do that, you're going to be playing three and three because this is how pretty much you're winning all your games. Most of your games, at least. If you make this, you're going to be winning. There's going to be games though where you're going to be doing a lot of chip damage, like I said. And when you do do that, you go into Cowboy. Cowboy for game is very, very real. Now, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that Cowboy is not a once per turn, or I should say it's not a hard once per turn. So there is times you have four Yosenju monsters on your board and you went into battle phase, etc., etc. You can make double Cowboy and burn your opponent. So like, you, you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Cowboy is very necessary in this deck. Then you have uh, Zeus. I like to play two Zeus or you could cut one Zeus and play a third Cowboy because Cowboy is really important. Zeus is really nice where if you go into the Utopia, somehow you don't OTK, somehow they stop your attack. You can go into Zeus and control the board in that sense. But you could if you wanted to just play one Zeus and three Cowboy. Really, it's up to you. I like two and two though, because there's a lot of situations where, you know, people aren't just going to let you OTK them. Yes, it happens a lot, but also there's a lot of times where your opponent's not just going to let you OTK them. So when that happens, Zeus is a really good backup plan. Then I'm playing one Cyframe Lord Omega as well as one Draco Berserker. These are just more for the Gamma, of course. This does come up pretty often, especially on your turn. If you're going to go Extrav, if you're going to go Tanky and your opponent activates a Hand Trap, you can go Gamma. So that's why I, I do like to play these two. And then I'm playing one Pentastag. Helps you OTK here and there. You never really go into it, but sometimes it does happen. So that's why I like to still play it. Then you're playing the one Lambda, of course, because you are playing the Gamma, as well as one Boral Sword. Like I said, there are times where you have like four or five Yosendus on the board. So sometimes making the Boral Sword to help OTK is, is, is very real. So you can do that as well. Just another option for you guys. And again, the thing that I like about this deck is that it has a lot of win cons, right? You have the Utopia package as your win con. You have the Cowboys as your win con. You have the Boral Sword as your win con. There are times as well where i'm going to be honest with you if you just dimension shifter going second your opponent's going to scoop they're going to be like okay i can't play through this they're just going to scoop it up right uh so yeah Th this deck is really really good a lot of win conditions and a lot of ways to win now i'm not saying this deck is going to be the best deck of the format but if you did want to play your senju i think this is the best way to play your senju at the moment this deck is super super fun and it can do a lot of cheeky things 
So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys have any suggestions, any comments, let me know in the comment section down below. This way we can get better as a community. I love the Spanko Squad when we all get better together. But I do want to say that this Yosenju deck, I'm not saying it's going to be the best deck of the format. I'm not saying it's going to be like amazing. I'm not saying you're going to go to a regional or YCS and win with it. If you did, it would be amazing though. I won't even lie to you. That would be actually super epic. But I do want to say that this is a pretty good format in general for Kaijus. It's a really good format for going second, especially when you're able to break boards and your deck doesn't lose to what other decks lose to which is why I think you'll send you if you wanted to play it now would be a good time but thank you guys all for watching I appreciate every single one of you and with that thank you sign and help peace